Ali. Salam. Necesin? Necesiz. Belçülüğüne koyup sen yere, o ne menedir? Mühendis, mühendis değil, bir de bilim götüyle. Ben özüm baba, kalacak edemem. Çırak at kerdi. That a filmmaker could manage to make one feature-length work while under house arrest and a ban from the state is a notable feat in itself. And since 2010, beloved Iranian filmmaker Jafar Panahi has made six. But more remarkable still is that in addition to risking life and limb for his craft, these movies happen to be good. 2011's This Is Not A Film was something of a novelty, a meta-documentary about a filmmaker having an existential crisis mulling over all the grand ideas he'll never see realized. The additional real-life story of the film being snuck into cans on a flash drive hidden inside a cake is too perfect. It feels like a story beat taken right out of one of his films, also playing into his status as a darling of the international film festival circuit. And every movie he's made since has built on this. Take 2015's Taxi, a film whose style might actually fool you initially into thinking it's indeed unscripted and found footage, and a film which, importantly, plays into the drama of Panahi's real life featuring real-life human rights lawyers on their way to see real-life activists in prison, and whose Golden Bear Award had to be accepted by his real-life niece who appears in the film. And his latest No Bears is further proof of just how flexible this style is, taking the is it a film within a film or is it to new lengths, or we should say to new depths. The story centers on Panahi, playing himself, residing in a dusty village near the border of Turkey, while he tries to shoot a film remotely. The film, that is, No Bears, alternates between Panahi getting caught up in absurd local conflicts and scenes of the movie he's shooting, whose relationship to the top layer of film's story and to reality grows increasingly complicated. We learn Panahi the character, and maybe Panahi the real person, is considering escaping Iran. And for that matter, so is everyone else. In an early scene, he's given an opportunity to do so, and panics at the last second, turning back around. His reason for bailing is ambiguous. He might be scared of the repercussions. He might fear the shady criminal forces who control the border area. He might feel he has obligations he still needs to fulfill. From this point on, this ambiguity lends Panahi a great deal of complexity. He's contemplative, often seen staring out of windows. His feeling towards the people of the village are not entirely clear. He's not particularly sentimental about them, and their traditions and culture, and the dialogue often reminds us that even many of them intend to escape the first chance they get. The film's most dour moments linger on the futility of the characters' situations. The film within the film is ostensibly about a couple trying to escape, though one of them is beset by hurdles, and it looks less and less likely that they'll both leave together. The scenes showing this development play out in a similar style, that is, with the same static shots and dead time as the rest of the film only perhaps with slightly more melodramatic performances. There's a superficial level on which this film, more than any other of Panahi's, owes some debt to his former mentor, the late Abbas Kurostami. He captures a great deal of the tedium and circuitousness of village life, and, on a thematic level, shows the ways in which the act of filming itself can blur the lines between reality and fiction. Though, this comparison might be unhelpful, as it misses the ways in which Panahi's film can be surprisingly volatile. Take the aforementioned scene where he considers escaping across the border, or some of the confrontations with the locals. There are moments where it feels something dark and intense is capable of suddenly erupting, and compared to the general languor of the rest of the film, creates a lot of tension. This, the dourness of the character situations, the tonal volatility of the film style, and lastly, importantly, the real life stakes for Panahi, his family and associates, his crew, imbue the film with an urgency and gravitas that is deeply affecting. When one hears that earlier this year Panahi was arrested and went on a hunger strike, not his first, to protest the illegality of his imprisonment, and then watches a film like this one, the influence of so-called real-life events does not feel like a gimmick, but rather like something absolutely necessary. 